I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, where we're going to explore how you can leverage your farm data to make decisions. This includes strategic planning decisions over the longer term, but also daily and sometimes hourly decisions that are going to ultimately drive your farm's profitability. Before we get started, we wanted to let you know that, as a token of our appreciation for the time you're spending with us on this webinar, Trimble would like to send you a free gift. These gifts are currently available only to those in North America and are limited to one per household. But if you've watched this on-demand webinar during the month of December 2018, we'll be sending you a gift. Watch for an email to hit your inbox a few hours after watching this for more information. I'd like to start by introducing our host. Kevin Pattison is the Engineering Director at Trimble Ag Business Solutions. He played a big role in developing what we know as Trimble Ag Software today. Kevin grew up on a working farm and then spent about 15 years focused on agricultural software. He's the brains behind the AgriData platform, which was acquired by Trimble a few years ago. So today our topic is the data-driven farm. We're going to focus on the farmer here and the pain points that farmers experience today. And then Kevin's going to look at the different technologies out there that can help address some of these challenges. So to provide some context for this topic, I'd just like to run through some of the most common pain points or challenges. And at the top of that list is managing variability. Equipment today can do precise applications, but farmers have to manage that across multiple zones and many fields. Once you do that, the data starts coming in and you're trying to make decisions based on what that data is saying. Another challenge is interoperability between systems. On most farms today, there's more than one type of equipment and piecing those different systems together can be a challenge. Skilled labor is another challenge facing uh, some farmers today, as well as keeping up with the pace of technology changes and innovations. And another challenge that we hear a lot about today is um, increased regulation and compliance. Um, and whether that's government re coming from government regulators or, say, general mills asking about inputs, applications, water management, soil treatment, that kind of thing, um, information that they need to get to the end customer. So let's get right to it. Here's Kevin and the Data Driven Farm. He starts off with some interesting findings that paint a really clear picture that can reveal exactly why it can feel so confusing today. Um, in the marketplace to know exactly how to leverage farm data to make profitable decisions. This is a list of companies from one, one uh, trade show I was at. Um, these were just the sponsors. There's probably three times as many of these companies there, and I didn't have time to put all their logos on. But you wonder why farmers are confused in the marketplace and what, um, how they have a hard time finding the tool that's going to be best for them. Um, so what I kind of did is I've been trying to break down the different types of systems that there are out there. Um, and really broke it down into five categories. Uh, record keeping, which is documenting, documenting what's happening in your fields, um, planning activities, managing inventory, um, managing your financials, compliance data, and actually just organizing that in a way that you can send it out to different people. Operations management, there's a lot of companies focused on the operation of the equipment, uh, producing maps, making prescriptions, and that's really where they focus. Where's the equipment going? What's it doing? Make it get to the right spot and record it. They're not so focused on record keeping. And then there's a lot of companies working in decision support. So taking information, uh, processing it, and making recommendations or providing insights back to growers on what they should do, whether it's uh, nitrogen applications or creating management zones, different things like that. Um, and helping agronomists and farmers make better decisions with more information. And then within that same group, there's also data providers. These are guys who feed information to these other companies and they don't really offer a product direct to growers, but you'll see their logos, you'll hear about them. Uh, companies like Planet Labs that do imagery, um, Airbus is in that same game, um, label. There's companies that manage label data for compliance. Uh, they would fall in that category. And then there's another group I would call point solutions. And these guys could fall kind of in any of the first three categories, but they're really focused on one key thing and they do it really well. Um, but it's one piece of the puzzle for the farmer. 
and then you need to be able to pull many point solutions together. And I think today a grower could probably um, spend all his profits buying different tools and hook them up and sensors and things like that, but trying to figure out which ones are going to generate an ROI and actually save them time versus cost them more time is, is a challenge for these guys. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the first three a little bit and touch on some of the things we do in uh, Trimble Ag Software to help with these and also um, talk about some things I see coming in the future that will that'll help going forward. But some of the key drivers for record keeping, I touched on earlier, food safety and food security. Uh, General Mills was a good example of that today. Uh, we've been working in the potato industry for a decade now. Um, every potato grower who grows processed potatoes has to report out on their fertilizer practices, their pesticide practices, irrigation, before they can deliver their products to the processor. Um, and as we're seeing in broader crops like oats and malt barley, uh, you guys are going to have to start dealing with those same things, and you're seeing some of that already today. Increased regulation around restrictions on applying products um, is continuing, and the governments continue to regulate that and add more pressure. Uh, so you can prove what you did where. Tracking profitability is key. How much is uh, all of this variable rate and different pieces working? Which fields are most profitable? Which zones are most profitable? Which treatments are working the best? Trying to manage that and report on it. And then increased efficiencies. As your farm gets bigger and more complex without all of this information organized in some system, it's just going to create more and more work. And if you can, if you can tie into a system that actually saves you time by organizing it and generating some of the reports on the fly for you. Um, that'll help you go forward. So some of the first things about the record keeping side, it all starts at the field level. Um, when we started, that's where we started collecting our information. And the one thing all of our customers have in common is they, they need information down to the field or the zone level uh, to be able to make decisions and, and track their data. So mapping field boundaries. Within our software today, there's about five different ways to get boundaries, whether it's from the equipment, driving around on a quad, uh, drawing it off a GIS map, uploading a drone imagery and, and drawing from that information. There's lots of different ways to get these boundaries in, but this is really the starting point for any precision ag and any data management system that you're gonna go into is getting your boundaries in place. Uh, next is tracking field activities and expenses. So uh, there's lots of activities that go on in the farm. Um, a lot of companies are focused on the operations that you're doing with your equipment, but there's also things where you don't have a have a uh, tractor and display recording information like insurance and fuel and um, consulting fees, um, machinery repair, things like that that have to go into the system. And if you're going to manage your information and provide profitability maps, you need to get all of that information in one spot so you can start to tie it together. Uh, compliance reporting is another one. Be able to track detailed records on what you're applying and be able to provide them out. If you start exporting your products to other countries, every active ingredient for all the pesticides we, we have, there's uh, MRLs designated for every country. So if you start exporting out, you need to actually be aware of what you're spraying on your crops because those are different per company. So I know a lot of guys are starting to talk about shipping containers to Korea and Japan and things like that. This is going to become more important in, even in our broad acre crops today. On potatoes, this is a big deal. Our guys ship stuff all over the world. Um, so knowing what products were applied and what rates and are they within the label limits is key. Um, active ingredient tracking on uh, how many times the active ingredient was applied, not just the product, but the active ingredient inside of the pesticide is, is a key piece of information. Um, we tie a lot of them, that into the system today. Uh, scouting data, uh, the ability to visit fields, record data, track what you're seeing, use that for forecasting your yields, um, planning your, your marketing, um, if you can estimate yields when you're in the field and use that to base your, your selling going forward, you can maybe take a better position in the market, um, track quality and things like that. And also, this is a great way for guys to track whether their treatments they're applying are actually working or not and what they're seeing in the field. This is an example of uh, a specific template for tracking strawberries. So we have things like when is it flowering, how many uh, plants were aborted, vine length, fruit size fruits per plant, and those can be used to generate yield predictions um, on different crops as we go through. The other thing that's, that's key outside of the record keeping is the, the operations that happen outside the field, like I mentioned, things like managing your inventory, uh, building budgets and plans across your field, so not only tracking what happens, but planning what's going to happen. 
uh, building a budget ahead of time and designing those plans so you can track what your revenue is, compare which crops are going to be most profitable, and uh, plan accordingly to those. Purchases and inventory management. Again, if you want to get your unit cost of production down to the, the lowest level, um, knowing what you spent on your chemical and fertilizer and seed and having that flow directly into your applications helps manage that quicker, creates efficiencies, also gives you the ability to see what your inventory balances are. If you buy so much product and apply so much product, it can tell you what you have left um, within the system. Uh, tracking harvest loads and bin inventory. So once you've got the crop off, being able to take those um, those measurements with a, with a waste scale, tie them in, what bin they went into from those bins, what contract they went into. Um, being able to keep all that up to date gives you the ability to market your grain better. And uh, if, you, if there's a, a fluctuation in the market and you either need to sell or hold off, you know exactly how many tons you have available to sell and you don't miss any opportunities with those. It also, by weighing your loads and pulling them into the system, you can get more accurate yield and tie that into your yield files to do post calibration uh, later on in the season. Um, from a market position and grain contract tracking standpoint, um, the ability to put in all of your grain, truck, grain contracts, what you have sold, uh, what you have left to sell, uh, who you're selling with, when your delivery periods are, all of this information is going to um, make it easier to manage your operation. And as things move forward and we get to more automated, things like Uber and you have trucks that are driving themselves, um, having this information already digital and available to other systems in the future is going to be a key to making that successful. Uh, this is an example of our market position sheet by commodity, what you've expected to produce, what you've actually harvested, what you've sold, uh, what's left to sell, um, key decisions there. And then looking at your records over time, so over a week or over a month, what's, what do you have to do, what's planned, what's happening, what actually happened, and be able to view that and send people out to the right fields to do the work is, is another piece of information. And then soil test data, analytical tissue tests, be able to bring that into one spot, analyze it, look at trend lines over time, over multiple years, and see if you're applying the right nutrients in the right places, and which uh, nutrients are having the best effect in your soil, and if you're having any uh, adverse effects, or um, continue to monitor those levels. And having this data flow in seamlessly into one spot where you can manage it over many, many years is, is a huge bonus getting rid of all your files and that data just goes to die in a filing cabinet so you can get it online and start to manage it, that's, that's key. Uh, moving to the next level uh, is operations side. So this is about creating prescriptions and sending things to the files, uh, seeing what your equipment did, getting the maps back um, and actually analyzing that, seeing what rates went on versus what was applied, uh, managing labor and where your people are and, and how much time they're spending and then I think the, the future of this is really automation and how, to, how do we continue to automate and make things, things uh, easier. The picture on the left is the, the Seedmaster dot, um, which is an automated implement, basically a self-driving implement where you can change the implements in and out and it's a 20 to 30 foot implement. Um, so these are things that are coming that are gonna disrupt the industry uh, over time. Um, so first off, integration with equipment data, be able to visualize what you're doing. This is an example of a field where they strip sprayed fungicide. Um, without the map, you don't really know that it's a, maybe a 160 acre field and they sprayed 50 acres of it, 60 acres of it. You wouldn't actually be able to see that if you didn't have the maps to go with it. So tying the actual record keeping data into the equipment data is a key piece of that information. Um, in Trimbleg software, we have lots of ways to get that information to the system. Uh, you can take your USB sticks and upload them, um, the data directly to the cloud, and we'll process it. You can also put it in our desktop software and process it there and sync it up. Um, and we also have API connections. So with, with different companies, we have uh, with JD, John Deere, we have a connection, uh, CNH with their AFS and PLM Connect platforms, Raven Slingshot, and Agco. So you can log, log in with your credentials, tie that information uh, to our system. We'll go and pull it and bring it in and process it inside Trimbleg software. Uh, moving into yield data, uh, this is an example of a, a yield file um, that was pulled in off CNH combine. So there's two combines here. It gets pulled into one file and displayed. Um, 
From here, we also have the ability to look at the different layers that come off of the equipment. There's, there's different, depending on the type of equipment, you'll get different attributes that are available. Um, Trimble's strategy has really been to connect with the pieces of equipment that are in the, in the tractors already, um, whether it's deer or Trimble or, or Case. Um, other companies are sticking little drives in um, and just shoot, shooting that data up to the cloud somewhere else and it goes off and, and they can read that data there. Um, all these displays are already in the tractor, so we're, we're really just tying into those displays. We don't have a dongle or anything that you, you stick in your, in your tractor um, to do that. We also have the ability to export all this data, whether you want it as KML or Shapefile, if you need to take it somewhere. Uh, we're making all the data within Trimble X software portable um, because the reason for getting it in one spot is so it's easily accessible and you can take it out wherever you want to go. So you can, you can export this data to take it out. Um, we also tie it into mobile. So one of the biggest things is make it accessible, make it easy to use and see it. So any of your maps that come into Trimble X software will also show up in the mobile devices um, and you can access them anywhere. So this is the same yield map and the same elevation map on my phone um, that you can go out in the field, you can be driving around, see these, see these files. You also can have management zones, benchmark points, uh, spraying zones, all these things can be appearing on your, on your mobile device. From a prescription side within Trimble Lake software, we also have the ability to build prescriptions, um, create variable rate prescriptions. This is a six zone uh, fertilizer application with just a single product, um, varying between 150 and 250 pounds. Um, you can build these prescriptions in, in the software and then we export out to many different controller files. Um, within, our, within our desktop software, we can pretty much export to any, any controller that exists out there. On the web, we pick kind of the major ones that are still, still out in the marketplace and we can export into the particular file formats for that equipment. And we can also send them wirelessly if they have a telemetry connection on those, uh, depending on the equipment, whether it's John Deere, or Raven, or Trimble. Uh, we can send them right to the vehicle as well. Uh, the other thing around operations is, is around logistics, management, and fleet, just where your vehicles are, how, uh, how much they're operating, how much they're sitting idle, where they're located, um, the ability to drive to them and, and see the status of those vehicles. Uh, this, this ties in with the, with the Trimble hardware and the telemetry units to push data up to the cloud and make it visible and push it down to the mobile device so you can see, see what's happening. Um, Irrigate IQ is another example for the guys with irrigation. Uh, Irrigate IQ is a, has a uh, variable rate component where they can uh, variable rate each individual nozzle of the pivot. And uh, they have software that goes on your phone that you can start the pivot, reverse the pivot, um, and, and see when it's working and what's not working. So everything's starting to get connected right into the, into the cloud. Um, time tracking, this gets more into the people side. And we built this particularly for the growers around um, just time tracking for their growers. When do they clock in? When do they clock out? We record where they logged in. Um, when they clock out, we record where they log out. And it just builds up your hours, totals them up. You can run reports for payroll and things like that uh, within the system. So profit maps. This is, this is kind of where the two pieces come together. Um, if you have the operational data and the record keeping data with all the financials, uh, you can start to build profit maps where it pulls in the as applied maps, assigns the cost to those, looks at what you've sold, what contracts you've had on, those grain, on that grain, what your sale price was, figures out your cost of your production, and spatially we'll build out a profit map um, within the system so you can see what's working and what's not. Um, this is a really powerful tool working with the growers and as a grower trying to understand if your variable rate program is working or not. Um, or if you're not doing variable rate, maybe you should be. If there's areas of your field that aren't making any money, um, maybe you don't need to put as much fertilizer there. You need to look at doing something else to improve that land or we've had examples where guys have just seeded parts of their field to grass and turn it into a waterway because it's not, it never makes any money. So um, this, this gives a lot, guys a lot of insight into, the, into their farming operation and uh, can provide a huge amount of value. The other thing we see happening um, in this area is, is more automation. So this is, this is a company actually called Agrimatics that builds a Bluetooth sensor that goes, hooks up to the waste scales of your, uh, of your grain cart. And 
it connects to your phone and it continually monitors your, the, your grain cart and it will track your loads automatically out of the grain cart. So every time you dump, instead of having to key in the information and write it down, it'll record it into the app, it gets pushed to the cloud. Trimbleg software actually does a connection with Agrimatics and it'll pull it into our system and tie it into your bin inventory. Um, so the need for someone to sit in the grain cart and write those down or punch them into the phone goes out the door um, and it all happens automatically behind the scenes. So, I think there's gonna be more and more technology coming like this, which is a simple device, uh, solves a problem. This is what I would call one of those point solutions. Um, there's, there's gonna be more and more of these coming as we go. Uh, the next wave of this, obviously, which is still a bit out, but um, some of these systems are gonna be going into production for demo purposes in the next year. Um, autonomous tractors and, and um, autonomous vehicles. So whether it's, it's a new tractor that's actually designed with the traditional framework like this case one that's shown in the top, top left or an aftermarket kit that can go on an existing tractor. Um, those might be some of the first ones going out. And then there's kind of revolutionary disrupting technologies like this small uh, Zaver uh, platform, which I think they're planning to put seven of these or something in, in the field at once and it will replace a 12 row planter. So there's a bunch of little rovers that are going around planting seed um, the Seedmaster unit is pretty neat because it's a, it's a U-shaped autonomous uh, framework that you can attach different implements to. Um, so um, they're actually going to be running, I think, uh, three or four of these next year in the field for testing. So this stuff's coming. And I mean, if, if you look in the consumer marketplace, um, companies like Ford and Volkswagen and uh, Tesla are talking about having self-driving vehicles by 2020. Um, that's not that far away. I think we're, we'll probably have a lot of these going by that time as well. And if you can, I think if you can put three or four um, smaller machines that are automated in the field versus one big 100 foot sprayer, you're probably gonna, uh, and can run it 24 hours a day and not worry about labor. And if one breaks down, you still have two running, it's, it's gonna be a game changer for guys going forward. Um, the other piece is more, not so much uh, about broad acre, but mechanical jobs like uh, harvesting uh, fruit and vegetables or picking weeds. This is actually uh, a weeder um, that will go over and actually do the job that typically would be done manually. Manually. So as we continue to see, I mean, from consumer demand, more organic farms and things like that, there's a lot of manual labor that goes into uh, managing those. And if we, they, I think there's a lot of money being poured into building these types of devices that are robotic uh, using sensing technologies to come through and, and uh, do that work. So the, the third section I wanted to go over was uh, the decision support side. Um, big data, we, we hear a lot about it. I think most people's strategy is let's collect a whole bunch of it and then we'll figure out what we're going to do later. Um, and most people, when you talk to them, they're like, well, we're not really sure what we can do with it, but we know if we can get lots of it, we can do something really cool. Um, so I think we're kind of in that stage right now. Um, but some guys are starting to use that data already with machine learning algorithms to analyze and come up with insights of, of what they can do. And I have a few examples of that. A lot of it today is focused on agronomy. So uh, nitrogen prescriptions or um, making management zones for, for spraying different pesticide rates. Um, that's, that's where a lot of focus seems to be today. Uh, there's some stuff focused on operations, but I think that's gonna be the big area as we get into autonomy that we see more investment around the operations side and what they're building. So um, some of the things we do where we pull in some uh, decision support information is around weather. Um, one of the things we do a bit different in Trimble Egg Software, we use a company called uh, WDT and they had a session this morning, I don't know if anyone caught it, but they, they do uh, weather modeling. So in the top left would be what you get if you have a single station and you see, okay, well it was, this was the temperature and humidity and wind speed. Um, with premium weather, you get a contour and it'll actually show you across a broad geographic area with a one kilometer resolution of what actually happened on that land. So storm goes through and it might have rained on the north half of the field and the or north half of the farm and the south part of the farm didn't get any rain. You can kind of direct your guys over there and you have to move equipment because it's too wet in one spot. You can, you can gain a lot of insights. So Data is also available historically. So if you want to see what happened across the last month or the season, uh, you can look at growing degree days, your temperatures, high and low temperatures. If there was a frost event, it might have only impacted part of your fields. 
Um, so it's really a cool way to, to look at that. This is an example of growing degree days over a period of a season. Uh, we pull in the historical averages based on that area as well, and then we'll compare against it. So are you warmer, are you cooler? Um, what's really driving your yields? This year in Western Canada, we had a lot of, uh, not very much rain, but guys were surprised a lot by their, the crop yields they got. So whether it was due to cooler temperatures or uh, less growing degree days matched with uh, the lower temperatures, maybe that helped save some of the yield, but um, there definitely was some surprises and this data can help kind of look through that. One of the other things we, we launched was hail alerts this year. Um, so anyone who's on our premium weather product, if there's a hail event in your area, you'll actually get an email with a map showing you where the hail fell. Um, we run this every night and uh, it takes the boundary of your fields and checks if there was a hail event in that area and then it'll email you a picture of where the hail fell. So if you've got a large for farm spread across a lot of acres or your crop advisor who's uh, needing to go scout a bunch of fields trying to figure out where the hail fell, this will give you an idea to drive right to where you gotta go look. And sometimes there'll be a field that from the road it looks like it's fine in the northeast corner where you can't get to that's where the hail came across. You'll see the strips of hail um, going through the system. In the, in the US, the radar is a little bit better. The picture on the right shows the actual different hail sizes. So as it concentrates in the middle, you can get up to three and a half, four inch hail. So it's, it's a pretty neat feature for guys who, who uh, cover a large area. Um, this is a, well, does anyone guess what this is a picture of? Does anyone recognize that area? Disneyland? The, the happiest place on earth, I think they call it. You got two kids under 10 and go there. It's the most expensive place on earth. <laughs> um, but we actually, we, one of the sensors we actually do work with is uh, moisture probes. And Disneyland works with some of the probes that we, we collect the data for. So they put all these moisture probes within Disneyland so they can track the water in their trees. Um, so within that probe, they can see the, the profile of field capacity and allowable depletion. They set their cultivar lines where they want to keep the water levels and then they can tune their irrigation to actually um, stay within the range. So saves them from overwatering, saves them from not watering enough and losing trees, which gets really expensive. Um, but we have a lot of guys, that's a cool example in Disneyland, but we have a lot of guys deploying this in, in broad agriculture, both for irrigated land and for dry land. Because there's a lot of information you can learn if you know, it seems dry in the top, but you know you've still got, still got subsoil moisture and the weather's been good, you might want to apply more nutrients, or if you know there's no, new, no um, moisture left, you might want to not want to do that extra pass of fungicide or pour more nitrogen to the crop, which is really not going to help it if it's too dry. Um, so these are, these are tools that aren't necessarily making decisions for you, but are providing information so you can make better decisions. And that's kind of the first wave of the decision support side. And going forward, they'll continue to be more that start to make the decisions for you. As the algorithms get better and people build more models, uh, we'll start to see more of that. Uh, this is an example of our um, interface from our screen for Power Zones. So a Power Zones, a product we have that takes multi years, uh, many years of satellite imagery and produces management zones based on the crop productivity index that it measures. Um, it's kind of based on NDVI, a, a Trimble variation of that. Uh, within the tool, you can go in and see exactly what each year looks like. So you could click through the different years and you can pull out wet years or dry years or years that had different anomalies because maybe the field got hailed or had a, had a uh, disease event and it impacted yield a certain way. Um, then you can actually regenerate your zones and make uh, new management zones based on your knowledge of the field. So. The computer itself can only do so much and we need the local knowledge and the farmers working on that. So this, we are giving people the tools to let them do that themselves. Um, and cause you can make the best choices. Some years you also have fields that continually get put together over time. So it's detecting whether there's multiple crops on those fields in those years, 2008 and 2005. Uh, because this Northwest side of the field is, was not performing as well. It thought it might be a different crop. Um, I think in this case, it was actually the same, same crop, just uh, wasn't a great year because of the elevation of this field. Uh, the other thing that's providing a lot of decision support today is drone imagery. And this has been a hot topic in, uh, in ag for quite a while now. Guys are buying planes because it's 
one of the coolest things to go buy. Um, I bought a drone a couple years ago just for fun, and I'm scared to fly it because I don't want to crash it. Uh, so my batteries keep going dead, and I have to order new batteries, and then I don't fly it again, and they go dead again. But uh, So there's a whole bunch of guys in this space. Uh, Slant Range is one of the guys uh, we, we've done some work with. Um, they have a really cool sensor. We're just pulling that data, and Trimble, Trimble doesn't have its own UAV company. Um, so we're looking at just working with any UAVs. We can import GeoTIFFs into our system and display them both within our web software and in the mobile software. So you can take any, any GeoTIFF and upload it. Um, we've done some, some work with Slant Range already to do, um, make sure we're displaying their legends properly and the, so the images look the same in our software as they do in their software. Um, so we've, we've done some stuff there. This is actually, this isn't a Slant Range image. This is a, a customer from uh, Tasmania. Um, that sent me some imagery. Says, "Hey, we want to see if we can see this in your in your platform. Uh, we just upload it through the website. Uh, as soon as you sync your phone, it's available on your mobile device. You could go scout that field. You could be driving through that field, spraying, and just looking at the map. We use a tile server, um, which actually scales the imagery depending how zoomed in, so it won't reduce it in here. The one thing we don't do, though, well, we can do, but we're not. There is a limit on the size, so some guys want to upload like three centimeter." images that are hundreds of gigs um, for one field. We don't take those today. I don't know if they offer that much value. So these are typically processed geotiffs um, that will show the detail that you need to do what you're doing in the field if you're just scouting. Um, but if you want to do more analysis, you might need the raw, the raw imagery back on those ones. Um, other things that are happening, I mean, we got, we got more satellites going in the sky every day, it seems. Uh, there's new companies launching satellites doing broad area analysis. Um, I think that's going to continue. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, we got these little sensors that you can now make for pennies versus hundreds of dollars previously that they're attaching to vines and to plants and to um, measuring plant size and how much they're growing every day and things like that. And this, this technology is getting so cheap, um, they're going to see more and more of that. And I think within the ability to do imagery analysis, there's, there's even better opportunities to do it without all these, all these little sensors. Um, with that, I think I got one video that will sum it up what we do at Trimble Egg Software and then we can open up for questions. You make important decisions for your farm every day, but when you don't have a clear picture of its operations, it's tough to plan for success and more specifically, your profitability. Trimble Ag Software enables access to all your farm data from one location anywhere, at any time. Crop inputs are your farm's biggest investment. Our software calculates your cost per acre, so you know the exact cost in each field and can be confident in making key decisions throughout the growing season. You will have peace of mind knowing you're on top of everything happening on your farm. From your mobile device, you can enter or view past applications, track your grain storage and contracts, monitor your equipment's location and speed, and record and share crop scouting findings with your team. Our software has third-party data transfer agreements with John Deere, CNH, and other key equipment manufacturers, so you have time to focus on success rather than sorting through data coming from different systems. With Trimble Ag Software, you will have access to field mapping tools, which will help you be a leader in the shift to precision agronomy. Keep your operations moving forward, save time, avoid guesswork, and feel confident in every decision you make. It's not just your farm that will benefit, it's your life too. Thanks, Kevin, for that excellent presentation. It gave us a really good overview of where farm data is heading and how farmers can turn some of these trends into actual strategies that will drive profitability. So we've got a few submitted questions that I would like to run by you. Here's the first one. So this is a question from a farmer. This all makes sense, I get it. I know I need to be tracking my data, but it's also overwhelming. Where do I start? Okay, good question. Um, on our software, I think one of the things I always say to start with is setting up your, your fields and your boundaries. Um, this really gives you an opportunity to visualize your farm and, and see it in a, a spatial format. Mm -hmm. um, once you assign the colors to it, uh, you can tell what, what crops are growing and this is something that can bring value to your entire organization immediately. Okay. As soon as someone from your organization goes onto the mobile app. They can see their field. If they're driving to a field, they can make sure they're in the right one. Mm -hmm. So it's really the starting point once you get going. 
after that, it really depends on uh, what pieces of your operation you need the most help with. Some customers like to start with grain contracts and managing what they're growing, what they've sold, along with what they have in inventory, when they have to make deliveries to the elevators. Having this information at their fingertips really can make a huge impact on their bottom line and let them make better decisions. Others might focus on planning and budgeting where they have to build out a farm and field level budget by crop uh, because they may want to take that to their bank and get approved for lending. So there's there's multiple places okay. you can start. The key piece is setting up your fields and then diving into the areas that have the most impact on your farm mm -hmm. uh, to get a quick ROI and then you can continually add more functionality over time. Uh, next we have a question from a farmer who's getting ready to take over the, a management role on his family farm. So here's the question. You're talking about an important long-term investment decision here when it comes to software. I'd like to know the most common pitfalls so I can avoid missteps along the way. For sure, it's a big decision and it requires a lot of work. Setting your farm up on any platform is going to take a level of effort that you want to be careful about picking the right uh, partner. And uh, there has been a lot of investment over the last five years in this space. A lot of startups have come out and um, there is a lot of flashy interfaces and things like that. I would I would caution people to make sure they're they're just not looking at the pretty pictures, but digging into what the software actually does and how it can benefit them. Okay. Um, sometimes the systems that are out there look really great and have great pictures, but they really don't uh, go that deep into the management of the farm. Mm -hmm. um, I think also uh, growers need to be aware uh, that going with a company that's um, a startup, they may they may change ownership or mm -hmm. or their goals might change over time if they've got money from from a venture capital, uh, their goal is to, to make a return. So mm -hmm. one day you may be working with an independent software company and the next day they might be owned by a large crop input uh, right. company. So you, okay. you don't really know. Um, there's also a lot of free apps out there in the marketplace and some of them are very useful. Um, but similar to those apps, if you're gonna invest a lot of time into them and manage your operation, you wanna make sure they're gonna be around. Mm -hmm. um, they have to generate revenue at some point yeah. Um, so their business model might change or they might also change ownership or um, they might start charging you and you, you're kind of going into an unknown uh, when you use those apps. Trimble uh, has been around in the egg space, software space, uh, going back almost 30 years on our desktop software and mm -hmm. 17 years of experience on our web-based platform. Uh, Trimble is a publicly traded company and committed to agriculture for the long term. Um, so it is... Uh, mm -hmm. A safe choice for growers who are worried about um, some of those issues of longevity and and uh, long-term commitment to the space. Okay, so given that it is an, a long-term investment, um, then reliability uh, is a is an, is a key piece to consider. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, a last question here. Um, so here's here's from a grower. Um, he's saying, "I'm sold on the whole." data question, especially when it comes to implementing variable rate and precision ag on my farm. But what happens when the data is coming in from so many different sources? Does Trimble software help merge it into one central location so I can actually see what's going on? Yes, okay, so one of the advantages of Trimble Ag software is the fact that we work with many manufacturers of equipment. Uh, most farms I've worked with have been mixed fleet, meaning they have equipment from many different manufacturers. Okay. Um, we have connections with APIs from companies like John Deere, Raven, Case IH, New Holland that allow us to pull data in from their systems and aggregate it all in one central spot. Okay. Um, we also allow people to bring USB sticks off of their displays if they don't have a telemetry solution on their equipment, upload it to the website, and we'll process and stick all that information in one area. Mm -hmm. And when we bring that data in, we organize it so it's all stored in the same fashion. So whether you have a spraying operation from a, a one piece of equipment and a planting operation from another type of equipment and a yield map from another piece of equipment, you can see all of that information in one spot. Okay. Tied back to the field and we spatially sort that data based on the boundaries that you put in the system. So having those boundaries in is, is key, like I said at the beginning. Yeah. Um, one of the new features we also have, have just released is the ability to take in uh, as applied equipment data as a shapefile. So really, um, 
any data that's coming in, if you can get it in a shapefile format, uh, you can bring that into the system and attach it to your fields as another layer uh, for application. So it replaces the need to go to many different systems and, and parse data and piece it back together. Uh, Triple Egg software does a lot of that work for you. Okay. And you can view those layers on top of each other. Is that correct within the system? You can. So you can view the layers uh, in the web web application. You can also view them while in the field on your mobile phone. So once a layer comes into the system, um, and you can see different attributes as well. So if okay. you bring in a, a yield map, for example, you could see the, the yield, you can see the elevation, you can see the speed, uh, moisture, all of those different layers that are attached to the piece of equipment will be displayed on the map. Excellent. Great. Thanks very much um, for the, uh, submitting those questions. And thanks, Kevin, for uh, the presentation and for going through this with us. No problem. Thank you so much for taking us through this, Kevin, and for answering those questions. It's been really helpful. And thanks to everyone who attended today. If you have additional questions about this topic or any other solution from Trimble Agriculture, please don't hesitate to reach out by email or by phone. The contact information is on the screen. And make sure to come back in the new year for our January webinar. We'll be giving you a heads up on that topic later this month through our website, in our newsletters, and via social media. Thanks again, and see you back here in January.